أما بعد as for what follows then what we have for our sittings between Maghrib and Isha بإذن الله تبارك وتعالى وبحوله وقوته by the permission and help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a monumental book that is entitled Ta'adheem Qadr al-Salat venerating the status of the Salat venerating the status of the Salat Ta'adheem Qadr al-Salat respecting venerating holding the Salat in high estimation holding the Salat in high estimation and great esteem by this great Imam Muhammad bin Nasr and Marwazi rahmatullahi alayhi and the scholars of Maru in Khurasan in the third century as for the author of the book and he is Muhammad ibn al-Nasr ibn al-Hajjaj al-Marwazi al-Imam Shaykh al-Islam Abu Abdullah al-Hafiz al-Zahabi rahmatullahi alayhi he says about him in his book Siyar Alam al-Nubala he says and he is Muhammad ibn Nasr ibn al-Hajjaj al-Marwazi the Imam Shaykh al-Islam Shaykh al-Islam his kunya is Abu Abdullah and he is a hafu and he is from the great memorizers of a hadith مولده ببغداد في سنة اثنتين ومئتين ومنشأه بني سبور he was born in Baghdad in the year 202 in the year 202 and he was raised in Naysabur and he was raised in Naysabur which is the city where Imam Muslim was from and a great number of the scholars of Hadith were from وَمَسْكَنُهُ سَمَرْقَانْدِ and in he took residence in Samarqand وَكَانَ أَبُوهُ مَرْوَزِيًّا and his father was from the people of Maru so he was Marwazi وَلَمْ يُرْفَعْ لَنَا فِي نَسَبِهِ and we don't know very much outside of that about his lineage and his family I mean, meaning his bloodlines الحاكم أني سابوري رحمه الله تعالى the great scholar of Hadith he said إمام عصره بلا مدافعة في الحديث Imam Mu'asrihi bila mudafa'atin fil hadith. He was the imam of his era without any dispute when it came to hadith. When it came to hadith, there is no dispute that he was the imam of his era. Rahmatullahi alayhi. Sami Abi Khurasana min Yahya bin Yahya at Tamimi wa Abi Khalid Yazid bin Salih. And he na- named some of his shuyukh that he met in the different Amsar, that he met in the different territories, such as Ishaq ibn Rahawai, and others from the notable Imams like Yahya ibn Yahya. Abu Bakr al-Khatib, he said, كَانَ مِنْ عَلَمِ النَّاسِ بِاخْتِلَافِ الصُحَابَةِ وَمَنْ بَعْدَهُمْ فِي الْأَحْكَامِ he was from the most knowledgeable of people about the differing of the companions of the Prophet وسلم, and those who came after them pertaining the ahkam, the rulings of the religion. Al-Zahabi rahmatullahi alayhi says, he says rahmatullahi alayhi, there has been said that he was the most knowledgeable of the imams about the causes of the differing of the scholars, absolutely. Meaning the evidences that each side brought pertaining detailed affairs of the religion where there was room for differing. One of those issues of differing between the ulama in the past and at present is the reason that he wrote this book, which is Ikthar Tariq al-Salat. Whether or not the person who abandons the salat takasulan wa tahawunan out of laziness and negligence is a Muslim. Whether or not the person is a Muslim who abandons the salat. That is not the purpose of these sittings to identify what is the rajih in this argument. 
what is the strongest view in this argument. But the purpose of these sittings is a topic of the book, Ta'adim Qadr al-Salat, venerating the status of the Salat, taking the words of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, and the words of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the words of the Imams from the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, and the Atba'i Tabi'een, and the Tabi al Atba' from the earliest of generations, pertaining the Salah, and the importance of the Salah, and how there is no action in Islam that has a status that is anything close to the status and importance of the Salah. Hoping that by hearing some of what we hear, the Salah will increase in its status in our hearts, and we will give more importance to the Salah and to focus in the Salah and to making sure that we pray correctly. And the scholars have written at great length on this subject from the scholars that have written on the subject were Imam Ahmed, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, in his book, al risala fi Salat, and in his Risala pertaining to Salat and the importance of the Salat and the danger of the person who was negligent in the Salat. Like the Imam Ibn Qayyim Rahmatullahi Alayhi in his book, al Salat wa Hukmu Tarikiha, the Salat and the ruling of the person who abandons the Salat. From the description that the scholars have given, therefore, for this great Imam, Muhammad ibn Nasr al-Marwazi rahmatullahi alayhi, who was born, as we heard, in the year 202, and who died in the year 294 to the hijr of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa making him 92 years old when he died, roughly. From the descriptions that they give to this great Imam is his concentration and his focus in the Salat and the, tra- and, the, and the tremendous respect that he gave for the status of the Salat. From the statements of the scholars in this regard, Abu Bakr al-Subghi, he said, Adraktu imamain lam urzaq al-sama'a min huma. Abu Hatim al-Razi wa Muhammad ibn al-Nasr al-Marwazi. Abu Bakr al-Subghi, he said that I met during my life two imams, but I didn't have the opportunity to hear hadith from them. One of them was Abu Hatim al-Razi, and the other one was Muhammad ibn Nasr al-Marwazi. فَأَمَا ibn Nasr فَمَا رَأَيْتُ أَحْسَنَ صَلَاةً مِنْهِ As for Muhammad ibn Nasr, and Marwazi, I never saw anyone who prayed better than he. لَقَدْ بَلَغَنِي أَنَّ زُنْبُورًا قَعَدَ عَلَى جَبْحَتِهِ فَسَالَ الدَّمُ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ وَلَمْ يتحرك. A report has reached me, he said, that on one occasion a hornet or a wasp, while he was praying, perched on his forehead and stung him so violently that he bled to the point that the blood covered his face and he didn't move and budge as the hornet was stinging him. Muhammad ibn Ya'qub ibn al-Akhram, we're still reading here from Siyar Alam and Nubana, the words of a Dhahabi. He said that Muhammad ibn Ya'qub ibn al-Akhram said, مَا رَأَيْتُ أَحْسَنَ صَلَاةً مِنْ Muhammad ibn Nasr I never met anyone who prayed better than Muhammad ibn Nasr. كان الذباب يقع على أذنه فيسير الدم ولا يذبه عن نفسه and he bugs insects, flies and the likes would land on his ears to the point that they would open up wounds on his ears and blood would start to pour or flow from his ears and he wouldn't uh, deflect them from himself وَلَقَدْ كُنَّا نَتَعَجَّبُ مِنْ حُسْنِ صَلَاتِهِ and we used to be astonished at how beautiful he prayed and how focused he was and how well he appeared in his physical appearance, how he prepared himself in the best clothing and so on and so forth to pray. You will see his chest you will see his chin against his chest, and he will be 
so straight that he looked like a piece of wood that was propped up. قال وكان من أحسن الناس خلقا كأنما فقئ في وجهه حب الرمان وعلى خديه كالورد ولحيته بيضاء. And he was from the best looking people. He was from the best looking people. And he, his cheeks and he had a redness like the redness of a pomegranate. Uh, or his face had like, the uh, color like the color of a pomegranate and he a uh, darkened color and his cheeks had like a, a rosy color and his beard was a bright white color. Rahmatullah alayhi. It was reported that he said, لم يكن لي حسن رأي في شافعي فبينما أنا قاعد في مسجد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أغفيت فرأيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في المنام فقلت يا رسول الله أكتب فقال يا رسول الله أكتب رأي شافعي فطأت رأسه شبه الغضبان فقال تقول رأي ليس هو بالرأي هو رد على من خالف سنتي فخرجت في أثر هذه رؤية إلى مصر فكتبت كتب شافعي He said I didn't used to have a good opinion about a Shafi'i and on one sitting on one occasion I was sitting in the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I fell asleep and while I was sleeping I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a dream and I said O oh, Messenger of Allah should I write the legal opinions of a Shafi'i should I write the legal opinions of a Shafi'i? And in the dream, he said the Prophet وسلم, dropped his head in a manner that looked as though he was angry and responded, you say opinions? They are not opinions, but rather they are a refutation upon the one who opposes my sunnah. He said, and so after having this dream, I went to Egypt and I wrote down the books of a Shafi'i rahmatullah alayhi from the scholars of his madhab. Muhammad ibn Hazm, he said in some of his writings, أَعْلَمُ النَّاسِ مَنْ كَانَ أَجْمَعُهُمْ لِسُنَنْ وَأَضْبَتَهُمْ لَهَا أَعْلَمُ النَّاسِ مَنْ كَانَ أَجْمَعُهُمْ لِسُنَنْ وَأَضْبَتَهُمْ لَهَا The most knowledgeable of people are those that have the greatest Efforts in gathering the sunan of the Prophet ﷺ, meaning in writing the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ. وَأَضْبَتَهُمْ لَهَا And in those that are most careful and precise in doing so. وَأَذْكَرَهُمْ لِمَعَانِيهَا And those who can remember the meanings of the ahadith and the sunan of the Prophet ﷺ, the best. وَأَدْرَاهُمْ بِسُحَتِهَا And those who have most knowledge about the narrations that are authentic, from the narrations that are inauthentic. وَبِمَا أَجْمَعَ النَّاسُ عَلَيْهِ مِمَا اخْتَلَفُ فِيهِ And about those issues that people agree upon, being able to distinguish them from those issues that people disagree about, meaning the scholars in the course of history have disagreed about. الذَّهَبِ رَحِمُ اللَّهُ تَعَالِي He said, وَمَا نَعْلَمُ هَذِهِ الصِّفَةِ بَعْدُ الصَّحَابَةِ أَتَمَّ مِنْهَا فِي مُحَمَّدَ بِنِي نَصِرَ الْمَرْوَزِ That we don't know any person after the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Think about this statement. Abu Dhabi rahimahullah ta'ala. Here writing this voluminous book, well over 30 volumes, Siyar Alam and Nubala, and the collection of the biographies of the most dignified scholars of Islam. He says that we don't know anyone after the time of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who meets this description. That Ibn Hazm Mentioned here about the most knowledgeable people. More than Muhammad ibn Nasr al-Marwazi. More than Muhammad ibn Nasr al-Marwazi. Rahmatullahi alayhi. So this shows us the qima of the book. And the value and the worth of this book that we are about to read from. And what we are reading from is a talakhis. And a intiqa muntaqa. And it is nothing but selections from the book of this great Imam that he wrote about the tremendous status of the Salat. Otherwise, the book of Muhammad ibn Nasr al-Marwazi rahimahullah ta'ala is around 1,200 pages long, just on this one subject. And this muntaqa 
was put together by some of the students in the Islamic University of Al-Madina for a learning seminar with the Shaykh Abdul Razak ibn Abdul Muhsin al-Abbad where he went through in a number of sittings the uh, selections that are available for us here that we'll be reading from bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. باب في تعظيم قدر الصلاة وتفضيلها على سائر الأعمال. A chapter about the magnificent status of the salat and the fact that the salat is given superiority and precedence and preference over every other action. He says الحمد لله الممتن على عباده المؤمنين. بما دلهم عليه من معرفته وشرح صدورهم للإيمان به والإخلاص بالتوحيد لروبيته وخلع كل معبود سواه. Says all praise belongs to Allah, who has conferred a weighty favor upon His believing slaves, with that which He directed them towards, of knowledge about Himself and awareness of who He of who He is سبحانه وتعالى. And all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has opened up their hearts so that they could believe in Him, tabarak wa ta'ala. And single Him out with monotheism, believing in His rububiyyah, in His Lordship. And discarding of everything that is worshipped besides Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَفَرَضَ جَلَّ ثَنَاؤُهُ عَلَيْهِمْ فَرَائِضَهُ فَلَا نِعْمَةَ عَظَمُوا على المؤمنين بالله من نعمة الإيمان. And then thereafter, after being guided to faith, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala obligated the duties upon them, and there is no blessing upon them. There is no blessing upon those who believe in Allah Tabarak wa Taala that is greater than the blessing of iman, of faith, and belief. والخضوع والخضوع لربوبيته and of Submitting to the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ نِعْمَةُ الْأُخْرَى مَفْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ And then the next greatest blessing after being guided to Iman and, sur- and surrendering and submitting to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obligated upon them of the prayer. خُضُوعَ لِجَلَالِهِ وَخُشُوعًا لِعَظَمَتِهِ وَتَوَاضُعًا لِكِبْرِيَائِهِ Out of humility, the prayer that they perform out of humility to His greatness, His magnificence, and His majesty, tabarak wa ta'ala. وَلَمْ يَفْتَرِضْ عَلَيْهِمْ بَعْدَ تَوْحِيدِهِ وَالتَّصْدِيقِ بِرُسُلِهِ وَمَا جَاءَ مِنْ عِنْدِهِ فَرِيدَةً أَوَّلَ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not obligated upon them after the obligation of singling him out with worship and believing in his messengers any duty that has more precedence or is more important than the salah. وَأَخْبَرَ أَنَّ ذَلِكَ أَمْرُهُ لَهُمْ And he has informed that this is what he has ordered them with وَلِلْأَنْبِيَاءِ وَالْأُمَمِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَبْعَثَ مُحَمَّدًا صلى الله عليه وسلم. And this is what he ordered the prophets and the nations of the prophets before he sent Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. He ordered them with the salah. فَقَالَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ لَمْ يَكُنِ الَّذِينَ كَافَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ مُنْفَكِّينَ حَتَّى تَأْتِيَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَةِ رَسُولٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ يَتْلُ صحفا متحرة فيها كتب قيمة وما تفرق الذين أوتوا الكتاب إلا من بعد ما جاءتهم البينة وما أمروا إلا ليعبدوا الله مخلصين له الدين حنفاء ويقيموا الصلاة ويؤتوا الزكاة وذلك دين القيمة الله تبارك وتعالى says in سورة البينة that those that disbelieve from the people of the scripture and the polytheists were not going to believe until clear evidence came to them. A messenger from Allah reciting 
pure pages of revelation that contain within them that contain within them the contents of the previous scriptures that had been unaltered and he meaning what was unaltered from the previous scriptures and they were not ordered to do anything up into the statement of Allah what means and they were not ordered to to do anything except to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making the religion sincere for him hunafa wa yuqimu salat and to establish the salat wa yu'tu zakah wa dhalika dinu al-qayyim and to pay the zakah and that is the religion of those that are rightly guided and those who are upon correct guidance therefore the first obligation after singling out Allah with worship tabarak wa ta'ala after uttering the kalima of ikhlas the statement of sincerity la ilaha illallah is a salah he said faja'ala awwala faridati nassaha bit tasmiyah ba'd al ikhlas bil ibadati lillah is salat therefore allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the first obligation that he mentioned by name after singling him out with worship the salat qala azza wa jalla allah the mighty and majestic says fa idha salaha al ashhur al hurum faqtulu al mushrikin haythu wajadtumuhum wa khuduhum wa ahsuruhum wa qudu lahum kullu marsad fa in tabu wa aqamu as salata wa atu al zakah fa khallu sabilahum wa qala fa in tabu wa aqamu as salata wa atu al zakah fa ikhwanukum fi al din allah surah at tawbah he mentioned pertaining those people that had waged war against the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and killed the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and had committed atrocities against the muslims he said about them that if they were to repent wa aqamu as salat and to establish the salat wa atu al zakah and to pay the zakah fa khallu sabila and let them go about on their way let them go free and allah tabarak wa ta'ala six verses after that they were to repent meaning from shirk and from their atrocities in fighting against the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions and establish the salat and pay the zakat fa ikhwanukum fi din that they will be your brothers in religion here allah tabarak wa ta'ala has defined what is required to be a muslim that a person repents from shirk and kufr and that a person establishes the salah and that he pays the zakah wa nadhiru dhalika ja'at al akhbar an an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa huwa din allah al ladhi ja'at bihi ar rusul wa ballaghuhu an rabbihi min qabla min qabli harj al ahadith wa ikhtilaf al ahwa he said and this was the religion of allah meaning the salah is the deen of allah tabarak wa ta'ala it is a vital component of the religion that the messengers came with and they conveyed from their lord tabarak wa ta'ala qabla harj al ahadith wa ikhtilaf al ahwa and before people fabricated things against the prophets and the messengers and before they differed over affairs of belief wa tasdiqu dhalika fi kitab Allah and the proof for that in the book of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is this verse fa in tabu wa aqamu as salata wa atu az zakah fa khallu sabilahum fa qawluhu fa in tabu khala'u al awthan wa ibadataha the proof that this is the religion of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is this verse in surah tauba Allah said fa in tabu if they repent Muhammad ibn Nasr al-Marwazi he said ay khala'u al-awthan wa ibadataha meaning if they abandon idols and the worship of idols wa aqamu as-salat and they establish the salat wa atu az-zakah fa khallu sabilahum wa qala fi ayatin ukhra fa in tabu wa aqamu as-salat ila qawli fa ikhwanukum fi din and he reports with the chain of narration from Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu anhu after mentioning this verse 
that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أُقَاتِلَ النَّاسِ حَتَّى يَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِنَ اللَّهِ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُ الزَّكَاةِ فَإِنْ فَعَلُوا ذَلِكَ عَصَمُوا مِنِّي دِمَاءَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ إِلَّا بِحَقِّ الْإِسْلَامِ وَحِسَابُهُمْ عَلَى اللَّهِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his capacity as a legal authority of his land alayhi salatu wa salam as a ruler over a nation and as a messenger of Allah he said I have been instructed to fight the people up until they testify that la ilaha illallah Meaning that once the people accept Islam and they testify that Muhammad is a messenger of Allah and they establish the salah and they pay the zakah فَإِنْ فَعَلُوا ذَلِكَ عَصَمُوا مِنِّي دِمَاءَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ وَأَمْرُهُمْ إِنَ اللَّهِ If they do that, then their blood and their property will be inviolable, will be protected under the authority of the Muslim land. And their affair will be to Allah wa ta'ala. So this is one of the ways outside of Al-Uhud wal Mawathiq, and the outside of covenants that exist between the Muslim governments and the non-Muslims that reside in their lands, or between Muslim governments and non-Muslim countries, or between any Muslims who live in a non-Muslim country and the people that they are around. Any regarding that which uh, makes people's property and blood inviolable from the greatest of those things is what is mentioned in this hadith. And if they were to do that, and if they were to testify, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, establish the salat and pay the zakat, then they would make their lives and their property inviolable and sacred. And their affair will be to Allah wa ta'ala. إِلَّا بِحَقِ Islam, Except for those things pertaining to the right of Islam and those things that require the capital punishment under the legal Muslim authority. Abu Abdullah, we'll skip ahead a little bit. He says, Abu Abdullah, rahmatullahi alayhi, Muhammad ibn Nasr al-Marwazi, he said, وَمِمَّا دَلَّ وَمِمَّا دَلَّ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى بِهِ عَلَى تَعْظِيمِ قَدْرِ الصَّلَاةِ وَمُبَيَّنَتِهَا لِسَائِرِ الْعَمَالِ إِجَابُهُ إِيَّاهَا after establishing in this first part of the book that from the essential meaning of Islam and from the essential components of the religion is the establishment of the salah more than any other action. Allah wa ta'ala begins with the salah. He says, Rahimullah ta'ala, and from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used to prove and demonstrate the tremendous status of the salah. And to prove and demonstrate that the salah is different than every other action. And the salah is different and distinguished from every other action. Is that he has made it mandatory upon his prophets and his messengers, every last one of them. وَإِخْبَارُهُ عَن تَعَظِيمِهِمْ إِيَّاهَا And he informed us, tabarak wa ta'ala, about the great importance that they show to the salah. فَمِن ذَلِكَ أَنَّهُ جَلَّ وَعَزَّ قَرَّبَ مُوسَ نَجِيَّةِ وَكَلَّمَهُ تَكْلِيمَةِ From that, he said is that we see that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala brought Musa close to himself and spoke directly to him and had dialogue with Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. This is found in the Qur'an. فَكَانَ أَوَّلَ مَفْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِ بَعْدَ إِفْتِرَاضِهِ عَلَيْهِ عِبَادَتَهِ إِقَامُ الصَّلَاةِ وَلَمْ يَنُصَّ لَهُ فَرِيدَةً غَيْرَهَا The first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Musa with عليه الصلاة والسلام after instructing Musa to worship him alone without any partners is the establishment of the prayer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not mention any faridah, any obligatory duty before that or besides that, in speaking to Musa, فَقَانَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى مُخَاطِبًا لِمُوسَى عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ بِكَلِمَتِهِ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهُ تُرْجُمَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said addressing Musa with his speech, without there being any interpreter between he and Musa. 
فاستمع لما يوحى انني انا الله لا اله الا انا فاعبدني واقم الصلاه لذكري So listen to what has been revealed to you, O Musa. Indeed, I am Allah, Allah said. Nothing deserves worship except for I. Fa'budni, so worship me alone. Wa aqim salata li dhikri. Think about that. The only thing that he said upon speaking to Musa from the duties of Islam, showing us the magnificent status of the salat and establish the salat for my remembrance. فَدَلَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَىٰ عِذَمِ قَدْرُ الصَّلَاةِ وَفَضْلِهَا عَلَىٰ سَائِرِ الْعَمَالِ Muhammad ibn Nasr, he said that proves to us the, trend, the tremendous status of the salah and his virtue over every other action. إِذْ لَمْ يُبْدِي مُنَاجِيهِ وَكَلِيمَهُ بِفَارِيدَةٍ أَوْبَلَ مِنْهَا أو أَوْلَى مِنْهَا Some copies it says what? أَوْلَى مِنْهَا Inasmuch as that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in initiating dialogue and speaking to Musa alayhi salatu wa salam did not begin with any duty more important than the salah. ثُمَّ مَا أَخْبَرَ عَنْ سَحَرَةِ فِرْعَوْنِ Furthermore, in the story of Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, we find the incident of the sorcerers in Pharaoh's court. بعد شركهم وعنادهم إذ يحلفون ب... إذ يحلفون بعزة فرعون متخذين إلها من دون الله. After they had made shirk with Allah تبارك وتعالى and had refused to accept the truth that Musa had come with, and after having swore an oath by the might of Fir'aun that they would be victorious over Musa and the deity of Musa. Alayhi salatu wasalam, having taken the Fir'aun, the Pharaoh, as another deity besides Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, وَلَمْ يَأْتِيهِمْ رَسُولٌ قَبْلَ ذَلِكَ And they had never seen a messenger before the coming of Musa. وَلَا سَمِعُوا كِتَابًا And they had never heard any scripture revealed, uh, any scripture being recited. فَلَمَّا أَرَاهُ مُوسَى الْآيَةَ هِنَا أَلْقَ عَصَاهُ فَقَلَبَهُ اللَّهُ حَيَّةً تَسْعَى فَالْتَقَفَتْ حِبَالُهُمْ وَعِسِيَّهُمْ فَعَلِمُوا أَنَّ ذَلِكَ لَيْسَ بِسِحْرِ وَلَا يُشْبِحُهُ فِعْلُ بَانِ آدَمْ And then Musa alayhi salatu wa salam showed them the miracle from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala casting out his staff that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala transformed into a moving serpent. Exposing the illusory nature of the sorcery that was done by those magicians, those sorcerers, using illusion and so on and so forth to make the eyes of the people believe that their staffs were moving and vibrating and so on and so forth, uh, slithering like snakes. فَعَلِمُوا أَنَّ ذَلِكَ لَيْسَ بِسِحْرٍ And because they were people of sihr, they were people of sorcery, they knew that this was not sorcery. They knew that this was not sorcery. And that nothing of the actions of human beings resembled what Musa had just done. إِنْقَادُ لِلْإِيمَانِ بِاللَّهِ Upon seeing that they submitted to belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَمْ يُلْحَمُوا طَاعَةً يَرْجِعُونَ بِهَا إِنَ اللَّهِ وَيَتَرَضَّوْنَهُ بِهَا ظَنًّا أَنْ يَغْفِرَ لَهُمْ عَمَّا كَانَ مِنْهُمْ إِلَّا السُّجُودِ إِلَّا السُّجُودِ They were not inspired to do any act of obedience by which they hoped that they could return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek the pleasure of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Imagining that if they were to do it, that it would cause Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them for what they had engaged in of sorcery. Illa sujood. Except for a sujood. This is what they were inspired to do. Wa huwa a'adhamu salat. Which is the most important and tremendous part of the salat. Qala Allah azza wa jal. 
فَأُلْقِيَ سَحَرَةُ سَاجِدِ The sorcerers fell into sajda. قَالُوا آمَنَّ بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ They said, we have believed in the Lord of all that exist. رَبِّ مُوسَ وَحَارُونَ The Lord of Musa and Harun. فَعَفَّرُوا وُجُوحَهُمْ لِلَّهِ فِي التُرَابِ خُضُوا عَنْ لَهُ And so they rubbed their faces in the dirt and sajda out of humility for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. فَلَمْ يَجْعَلِ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ مَفْزَعًا إِلَّا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ مَعَ الْإِيمَانِ بِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give them a means of return and recourse, anything to turn to and rush to, except for the salah, after having believed in Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. وَهِيَ مَفْزَعُ كُلِّ مُنِيبٍ and the salat is a mafza' of every person who wants to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best way to turn to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the salat. ثُمَّ كَانَ مِنْ أَوَّلِ مَا أُمِرَ بِهِ مُوسَى أَنْ يَأْمُرَ بَانِي إِسْرَائِيلَ بَعْدَ أَنْ آمَنُوا بِهِ الصَّلَاةِ Then the first thing that Musa alayhi salatu wa salam ordered Banu Israel with after they believed in him was the salah. Because Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he said, فَمَا آمَنَ لِمُوسَى إِلَّا ذُرِّيَّةُ مِنْ قَوْمِهِ عَلَىٰ خَوْفِ مِنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَا لَائِهِ مِنْ يَفْتِينَهُمْ That very few of the people believed in Musa alayhi salatu wa salam from his people. Because they were afraid of Fir'aun and their mala, meaning their ashraf. At-Tabari rahimahullah ta'ala, he says in his tafsir, that malaihim, yani that their ashraf, yani that the notables from amongst them were their fathers, because the men had been slaughtered, because the men had been slaughtered, and their mothers were slave women, and their fathers were slave masters, and they were afraid of the wrath of their fathers, who had their parents in bondage, and these were the people who believed in Musa. Alayhi salatu wasalam in the beginning of the affair. And so the first thing after Banu Israel, a portion of them, a segment of them believed in Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. The first thing that Musa ordered them with was the salah. فَقَالَ وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَى وَأَخِيهِ أَنْ تَبَوَّأَ لِقَوْمِكُمَ بِمِصْرَ بُيُوتَ وَاجْعَلُوا بُيُوتَكُمَ قِبْلَةَ وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ and we revealed to Musa and his brother, Harun. And he too assemble those homes that believe, of the people who believe in you. And to make a qibla in the homes of those people. And he, وَجْعَلُوا بُيُوتَكُمْ قِبْلَةً And he make, and he the homes of the believers, the qibla, and he, that they turned to in the salat before they had a masjid, before the masjid al-Aqsa and so on and so forth. وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ And establish the salat. وَحَكَ عَنْ عِيسَى صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ هِنَ تَكَلَّمَ فِي الْمَحْدِ صَبِيَّةِ أَنَّهُ قَالَ
وحكى عن عيسى صلى الله عليه وسلم حين تكلم حين حين تكلم في المهد صبية. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa taala conveyed to us the words of Isa ibn Maryam of the Christ Jesus when he spoke as an infant in the in the cradle. أنه قال إني عبد الله آتاني الكتاب وجعلني نبيا. That from his speech as an infant, as that he said that indeed I am the slave of Allah. He has granted me the scripture. وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيًّا And he has made me a prophet. وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُ And he has made me blessed wherever I may be. وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ مَا دُمْتُ حَيًّا And he has made it incumbent upon me, mandatory upon me to establish the salat, and to pay the zakat, to perform the zakat, and to pay the zakat so long as I am alive. So long as I am alive. وحكى عن إبراهيم خليله أنه لما ذهب بإسماعيل صلى الله عليهما وسلم فأسكنه بواد ليس به أونيس دع ربه فقال ربنا إني أسكنت من ذرية بواد غير ذي زرع عند بيتك المحرم ربنا ليقيم الصلاة فجعل أفئدة من الناس تهوي إليه Likewise, Allah conveyed to us the speech of his prophet and messenger Ibrahim, his khalil, his beloved, and his friend. That when he went with Ismail to leave him to dwell in the valley of Mecca, where there were no human beings, not even a small number of them dwelling, that he called upon Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, his Lord. And he said, O oh my Lord, I have left some of my progeny to dwell in a land without any vegetation at the location uh, of your sacred house, of your sacred house. رَبَّنَا لِيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ O my Lord, so that they could establish the salat. وَلَمْ يَذْكُرْ عَمَلًا غَيْرَ الصَّلَاةِ And he didn't mention any action that he hoped for from them besides the salat. فدل ذلك أنه فدل ذلك على أنه لا عمل أفضل من الصلاة ولا يوازيها. And it shows us that there is no action that is more superior than the salat or that is comparable to the salat. وقال تعالى أن الله تبارك وتعالى said وإذ بوأنا لإبراهيم ما كان البيت ألا تشرك بشيء وطهر بيتي للطائفين. And remember, when we showed Ibrahim the location of the house where they were to build the Kaaba, instructing him that you are not to make shirk with me in any way whatsoever, with anything, in any way whatsoever. And purify my house for the ta'ifin, wal qa'imin, wa rukka sujood, for those making tawaf, and those standing in prayer, and those in ruku'ah. And those in sujood. He said, حدثنا محمد بن رافع قال أخبرنا عبد الرزاق وهو صنعاني قال حدثنا معمر عن قتادة طحر بيتي للطائفين قال من الشرك وعبادة الأوثان وقوله للطائفين والقائمين قال القائمون هم المسلون Reports with the chain of narration from Qatada, from the Tabi'een, from the scholars of Tafsir, that the statement of Allah and purify the both of you, meaning Ibrahim and Ismail, purify my house for those that want to make tawaf, meaning purify it from polytheism. And idolatry and the worship of idols. Well mean and purify it for those who make tawaf and those who stand. He said those who stand are those who pray. Allah Wadkur Pilkitabi Ismail 
إنه كان صادق الوعد وكان رسول النبي وكان يأمر أهله بالصلاة والزكاة. Likewise, Allah said about Ismail, عليه الصلاة والسلام. And remember Ismail in the book, meaning in the Quran. Indeed, he was truthful to his promise. And he was a prophet messenger. And he used to order his family with the salah and the zakah. وَقَالَ وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ نَافِلًا وَكُلًّا جَعَلْنَا صَالِحِينَ وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَحْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ فِعْلَ الْخَيْرَاتِ وَإِقَامَ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِيْتَاءَ الزَّكَاةِ Likewise, Allah said in describing Ishaq and Ya'qub, Ishaq the son of Ibrahim, and Ya'qub his grandson, عليهم الصلاة والسلام, and we gave him as a gift, Ishaq and Ya'qub, as something extra. Meaning that Ya'qub, he would see Ya'qub born during his life. And we made them from the righteous. And we made them imams, guiding others by our revelation. And we revealed to them fi'lan khayrat, the performance of righteous deeds, wa iqam as salat, and the establishment of the salat, wa ita as zakah, and the payment of the zakah. Wa qala fi qissati Zakariya, and he said in the story of Zakariya, alayhi salatu wa salam, فَنَادَتْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَهُوَ قَائِمٌ يُصَلِّي فِي الْمِحْرَابِ This comes in Surah Ali Imran. That the malaika, the angels called out to him. While he was standing praying in his mihrab. And he praying in his mihrab, meaning in his musalla. He said, حَدَّثَنِي أَدَّوْرَقِي أَحْمَدٌ فَنَأِي حَدَّثَنَا سَيَّارْ فَنَأِي حَدَّثَنَا جَعْفَرِ بِنْ سُلَيْمَانِ قَالَ سَمِعْتُ ثَابِتًا الْبُنَانِي يَقُولْ الصَّلَاةُ خِدْمَةُ اللَّهِ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَوْ عَلِمَ شَيْئًا أَفْضَلَ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ مَا قَالَ فَنَادَتُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَهُوَ قَائِمٌ يُصَلِّي فِي الْمِحْرَابِ It was reported from Thabit al-Bunani who was from the students of Anas ibn Malik and the Tabi'een that he said that the Salah is service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the earth. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew of anything better than the salah, then he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have praised Zakaria by saying that the malaika called out to him while he was standing praying in his vihrab. Abu Abdullah Muhammad ibn Nasr. And Marwazi said, وَقَالَ يَا مَرْيَمُ يَا مَرْيَمُ قْنُوتِي لِرَبِّكِ وَاسْجُدِي وَارْكَعِي مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ Likewise, Allah said, describing Maryam, O Maryam, be devoutly obedient to your nurturing Lord and make sajda and ruku' along with those that make ruku'. Thumma dhabihu ibn Khalil al-Rahman. Furthermore, he said, we have a dhabih. And he's the one that Ibrahim was ordered to slaughter from his two sons as a test. By Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said, فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا وَتَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِيلِ And when they both submitted to the command of Allah to slaughter the son of Ibrahim, and Ibrahim laid him down upon his forehead. قَالَ بَعْضُ الْمُفَسِّرِينَ قَالَ لِأَبِيهِ اُذْبَحْنِ وَأَنَا سَاجِدِ That the reason that he was laid down in his forehead, some of the scars of tafsir said, is that he said to his father, if you're going to slaughter me, then slaughter me while I'm in sujood. I'm in a state of sajda. ثم داود نبي الله وصفيه لما أصاب الخطيئة وأراد التوبة لم يجد لتوبته مفزعا إلا إلى الصلاة. And then Dawood, as comes in Surah Sa'd, when he fell into an error, Concerning his judging between two people and hearing one side without hearing the other. And he was remorseful. And he wanted to repent to Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. He didn't find anything that he could do to show his penitence. To show his desire for repentance other than to turn to the salah. Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, he said, 
فاستغفر ربه وخر الراكعا وأناب. So he sought forgiveness from his Lord and he fell down in ruku' راكعا وأناب and he bowed and turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his error. ثم سليمان بن داود عرض الخيل بالعشي فأشغله النظر إليها عن صلاة العصر. Then we find in the story of Sulaiman ibn Dawood, the Prophet of Allah, alayhi salatu salam, that he was tending to his horses, his steeds, that were part of his cavalry for his army. فَأَشْغَلَهُ نَظَرُ إِلَيْهَا عَنْ صَلَاةِ الْعَصْرِ And attending to these horses, these mighty steeds of war that he had, Busied him away from praying Salat al Asr in its proper time, hatta ta'akhara waqtuha, until the time for Salat al Asr had been significantly delayed. Fa'asifa wa nadim. And he became saddened and remorseful. Fa'aqaba nafsahu, yan harama al khayla al nati, ashgalatu hatta jawaza waqta salatihi. And so he punished himself by forbidding himself this luxury of being with these horses, these steeds and tending to them that he enjoyed, that had caused him to delay the praying of the Salat al-Asr. فَاَتَرَضَهَا يُعَرْقِبُهَا عُقُوبَةً لِنَفْسِهِ لِيَغُمَّ عَلَيْهَا بَدَلًا مِنْ لَهْوِهِ بِهَا حِينَ اَعْتَرَضَهَا he said, and so he brought them out, يُعَرْقِبُهَا And he taken them by their عَرَاقِيب Hamstringing them, like you do to an animal when you're going to slaughter, you tie it by his feet, and you hamstring it. However, some of the scholars, even though there are scholars from the Salaf, and who say that this was the understanding of the verse, and sort of they saw it, that Sulaiman slaughtered his horses, and he, they mention and he, what is found in Sahih Bukhari, Kitab Tafsir, and he, that which contradicts it. And that which shows that, and he, that his rubbing them on their legs, uh, and his rubbing them on their manes, and so on and so forth. And he was out of sadness, and so on and so forth, but there's nothing to prove and to demonstrate definitively that he, and he punished these animals by killing them and sacrificing them or slaughtering them, and so on and so forth, because they had distracted him from the salat. He says, Rahmatullah alayhi, فَأَلْهَاهُ النَّذَرُ فَأَلْهَاهُ النَّذَرُ إِلَى حُسْنِهَا وَسُرْعَةِ سَيْرِهَا فَلَمَّا عَاقَبَ نَفْسَهُ بِتَذْرِيبِهَا عَنَاقِ الْخَيْلِ شَكَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ ذَلِكَ فَعَوَّضَهُ مِنَ الْخَيْلِ الْرِيحِ أَسْرَعُ فِي السَّيْرِ وَأَوْطَعُ فِي الرُّكُوبِ مِنْ فَوْقِهَا وَأَشْرَفُ فِي الْقَدْرِ وَأَرْفَعُ فِي المنزلة. وعجبوا في الأحدوثة فكان يغدو من إلياء من إلياء فيقيل بإستخر يعني إلياء is the ancient name for uh, what they call today Jerusalem Jerusalem when he punished himself in this way by depriving himself of these steeds that had busied him away from the salat and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced that by making the wind subservient to him. And the wind, without a doubt, if a person can be carried by the winds, and a wind is quicker than a horse. So the person, taraka shayyan Allahi awadahu Allahu bihi khayran mir. The person who leaves something for Allah, Allah will replace it with what is better. And so they are, any of the winds, without a doubt, are more noble in status. And he and if a person has control of the winds, and he, then they can travel further and so on and so forth. And so this is from the blessings of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. He said to the point that it was said by some of the scholars that he in the early part of the day could be in Jerusalem and at the end of the day or at the time of Qaylula, Fayaqilu, at the time of Qaylula, some of the scholars say Qaylula is before. Some say it's after Salatul Dhuhr. And he, he could find himself in Istakhar, 
يعني استحر يعني which is in modern day Iran and Persia just hundreds of miles away in a short period of time he will be able to travel حدثنا محمد بن رافع حدثنا عبد الرزاق أخبرنا معمر عن الحسن البصري في قوله غدوها شهر ورواحها شهر قال فكان يغدو من دمشق فيقيل باستخر ويروح من استخر فيبيت بكابل وما بين دمشق واستخر مسيرة شهر المصرع ومن استخر إلى كابل مسيرة شهر المصرع Al Hasan al Basri he said about the statement of Allah Tabarak wa Taala in Surah Tisaba, verse number twelve, and he that the Rudu and the Rawah, and in the early part of the day and the late part of the afternoon, and he he could go in that period of time the distance of what normally takes a month, of what normally takes a month. He said that he would in the early part of his day find himself in Damascus, and at the end of the day he will find himself in Istakhar, which is in modern day Iran. And in the Rauha, meaning in the late afternoon, he could find himself in Istakhar, and by the time that he would retire at the end of the day, he, by the winds, would be able to be taken to Kabul, which is in Afghanistan, right? In Afghanistan. And between Damascus and Istakhar is the distance of a month's journey for a person who was riding very fast on a horse. And from Istakhar to Kabul is a distance of a month's journey for a person who is traveling very fast by horse. Now it takes a couple hours by airplane. And this is from the favors of Allah upon His creation. The majority of them are ungrateful. And he mentions from Abu Ahwas, from Ali bin Abi Talib, الصلاه التي فرت فيها سليمان صلاة العصر. The salat that Sulaiman had fallen short in was the salat al-asr. Was the salat al-asr. And he brings this chain, chain of narration from Qatada. That when Sulaiman said, "Inni ahbabtu hub al khairi an the," tash ghalini an dhikri Allah. أخر مع عليك فكشف عراقبها وضرب عناقه. It brings the report from Al Hasan al Basri, who said what other scholars of Tafsir understood from the verse that when Sulaiman عليه الصلاة والسلام had inadvertently delayed the صلاة العصر, that he slaughtered these horses, and he saying that by Allah you will not busy me away from the remembrance of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. So these are some of the stories of the prophets and the messengers that show us the tremendous status of the salat. And we'll continue tomorrow bi idhnillahi tabarak wa ta'ala with some of what is mentioned elsewhere in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pertaining the tremendous status of the salat and the great importance that the prophets and messengers gave to the salat. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yujaddida lana imanana and to renew our faith for us and to make us from those يُعَذِّمُونَهُ حَقَّ تَعْظِيمِهِ And you glorify him and venerate him as he deserves. هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الله أكبر